Hi, this is Christy Burcham with Scissortel Studio, and in this video I'm going to show you how to digitize a Bernina paintwork file uh, using the Bernina DesignWorks software. I recently got a Bernina paintwork attachment for my machine, and I love this thing. I have been making t-shirts like crazy. Of course, there are lots of things you can paint with the paintwork tool, but I especially love doing t-shirts. And recently I found this great piece of artwork that was a free download available from the Basic Gray blog. And I'll provide a link to this uh, blog where you can get this artwork yourself uh, in, in my blog post. Um, but I just loved this quote and I loved the artwork and I wanted to put it on a shirt. So what I thought I'd do is show you in a video how to take the artwork from the Basic Gray blog and convert it to a paintwork file using the Bernina DesignWorks software. So the artwork is found on the Basic Gray blog and again I'll put this link on my blog post and here's the original uh, poster and there's a great zip file down here where it says creativity poster download if you'll click that link it will download this artwork and you'll get a 10 by 12 size an 8 by 10 and some smaller sizes as well so lots of ways to use um, this artwork and once you've downloaded that uh, zip file the next thing you'll want to do is to open up your Bernina Design Works software and you'll create a new file. You'll want to go ahead and unzip that artwork as well before you go and open your design work software. So once we click new, uh, the first thing that will happen is that open dialog or wizard will open up and we'll start by just selecting none. We'll just use a plain white background for this project and then click next and on this screen it is the artwork source so this is where we're going to tell the design works software which one of the which piece of artwork we want to use so we'll choose from file and then you're going to select the location where you have saved this artwork so here is the 8 by 10 size which is the one I want to work with and um, then you will click the open button and then you'll see it listed here in your from file You'll also need to choose your hoop, and I'm using the Bernina Jumbo Hoop, um, and I choose the one that says number 93. And what that means, that number 93, that's the attachment. So the paintwork attachment is number 93. So we need to choose the hoop with attachment 93 because we need to make sure that we allow the software to leave enough clearance for the size of that attachment. So be sure you choose the appropriate hoop here. Now you'll click the next file and here you're going to decide what you want to do with the artwork. You can open it as a backdrop and then manually digitize the shapes over the top of it, but we'd like to let the software do that work for us. So we're going to choose trace or convert my artwork to outlines and then click the next button. Now on the next screen you'll have some options to uh, change some default options so you can scale your image. I'm actually just going to uh, let it be the default scale, uh, leave the accuracy at the default, but I do want to change the color limit. In this artwork there are actually five colors. There's a teal, a pink, an orange, a dark purple or navy, and then the white. So I want to tell this to be five colors and um, that will really save me a lot of time later. Now as far as using the background, we do not want the design work software to paint the background. We don't want the white background to be painted so we'll leave that unchecked. And then we'll just wait a moment while the software does its work and converts the artwork to paintwork shapes. Okay, so once the design work software has done its thing, you will see the shapes in the window and um, now you can click the trace button. The next screen that is going to open is going to show you the brushes that are used and you can change the brush colors at this point if you want to change the palette. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the default palette, which is the RGB palette and you can see the five uh, brushes that are selected. And now I will click the finish button. From here you can see that your artwork is um, 
selected and it's um, in the screen your artwork is actually behind the paintwork objects and the first thing I want to do is to enlarge the artwork or pardon me the paintwork objects so that they fill that jumbo hoop that I'm working in and once I've got it the size I want it then I want to move it So we want to move those objects just so that they're centered in the hoop. Now, as you can see, the artwork in the background is kind of distracting because it's not the same size as the paintwork objects anymore. So you can go to the View menu, you can go to Backdrop, and tell the Design Work software to hide the backdrop. Now you won't see that and be distracted by uh, that artwork in the background. Now we want to just change a few things about this artwork before we actually paint it out. So let me zoom in and I'll show you one example. On this word Albert, you can see that the software uh, converted the, um, the word Albert, there's a fill in the center of these loops, and we'd actually like to remove that. Um, you can see that when I mouse over it, there is an object here, which is going to make it pretty easy for us to cut a hole in the background so that we can have um, a hole here. So what you're going to do is you're going to select that top object, the one you're using to cut the hole, and then you can hold down the shift key to select your background object, and then you're going to use the trim tool. And notice when I mouse over the trim tool you see that red line, that's where the cut is going to be. So we'll click the trim tool, and you can now see the new uh, hole that's been created which is great so you can actually do that with a couple of objects at a time when you use the trim tool see now both of those objects are going to be cut and then you'll just repeat that for all of the objects in your paintwork that you need to remove those centers and there's several of them here where I want to go through and uh, remove those centers of those uh, letters now another thing that we can do is um, to just look for little uh, objects that need fixing. So for example, we look at this letter E, see how the uh, objects are not showing on this uh, top section. Now well, that has to do with uh, a couple of things, but there's a really easy fix for it, and that is to select this letter and to change the fill type from a fill to a zigzag. So you can see over here in the object properties this is currently a fill paint but we want to change it to a zigzag and that does a great job. I actually prefer the zigzag fill um, the way it moves around the object here. So that's a simple change and when we make that tweak we'll go ahead and make it to each of the letters in that word creativity and in fact you may want to do that to many of the objects in your uh, project here is to change them from the default fill type to a zigzag fill type. It just depends on the look you're going for as to which one of the fill types you're going to prefer. So I just like to select them and change them and see how they look. So we would go through and do that to each of the objects where we want to change the fill type from its default um, in some cases it actually will default to a zigzag, which is the case here on several of these letters, but you can convert it to another type if you like. Now another thing I like to do with these lettering objects in particular is to add an outline to them. So in addition to the fill, we actually want the pen to come in and draw an outline around the letter. That's going to give it a cleaner finish and um, just kind of give it a more block appearance as opposed to being able to see those little zigzag strokes around the uh, object. It's very easy to add an outline to an existing object that's already a fill. To do that, all you need to do is to select the object and then look down here in the brushes palette. You can see in the brushes palette that this color, the green pen, has the little bucket in the lower right hand corner selected that tells me that the fill for this object is this color. If you look over here at the none 
paint brush, so see how you have this gray box with the X through it, that's your none fill or no fill, um, and you can see in the top left corner how the little pencil is resting in that top left corner, so that tells me that the fill for this object is, uh, pardon me, the outline for this object is none, there's no outline selected. So to add an outline to this object, if it's going to be the same color, all I need to do is to left click right in that upper left corner of the paint color that I want to use. So I'm going to left click in this upper left corner and it adds the pencil. Now you can see that pencil in the upper left corner of that green box and I've added an outline to that object. You can do this to multiple objects at once by selecting the shift key as you're selecting multiple objects. Then come down here, left click that upper left corner of the color you want to be the outline and you've added an outline to those objects. Now that you have an ob outline on the object, if you want to change the object properties of the outline, it can be done under object properties and then you click the pencil to make any changes to that outline that you want to. So again, we'd repeat that for as many of the uh, lettering objects as we want to. You'll also find that you may want to delete some objects to simplify the artwork. So for example, these uh, leaves up at the top would be a lot simpler to paint if they didn't have a fill here in the center. So I'm actually going to delete some of the chunks of this and then um, I'm going to delete some of the little leaves, the detail, just to simplify those. We don't need that extra center detailing. So I'm simply clicking on the object I don't want and then touching the delete key on the keyboard and getting rid of any extraneous objects that I don't want to paint. Whoops, I want to keep that one. Good thing we have an undo button. It's this little guy I want to get rid of. Now I want to simplify this further and instead of having a painted leaf here, I want to have just the outline of this leaf. To do that is a very simple change. We select the object and we can again down in the bottom see that the paint fill bucket is on the orange and the pencil outline is on the none. What we want to do is basically flip that. So we'll click in the upper left corner of the orange to add an outline to that object. And now I'm going to click in the lower right corner of the none to set the fill to none. Now you can see that it's going to paint just an outline of that object instead of a fill. And you can do that for any of the objects in this project that you want to. Instead of making a fill, we'll simply change it to an outline, add the outline, and then come over here and select none for the fill. You can do that to any of the objects you want to. I actually think I like that one filled. But we would do that, I did that for many of the swirls. Add the outline and remove the fill. I like the way this looks and I also love the fact that it's going to make my project go faster because instead of having to paint the whole fill, I'm just painting the outline. So it will go much faster. So you would go through and repeat that for as many of the objects as you want to change to an outline. Now one other thing you may find is that you have a few little paint objects that just didn't quite uh, convert the way you want it to. And a good example is this letter F. The shape of the letter F is just not quite right. You can't tell it's an F and it just needs to be tweaked a little bit to improve how it looks. So one thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add an outline to this one and we'll change its fill type to zigzag, uh, which is what we would do to all the letters in this section. But we still need to tweak the shape of this. So I've got this uh, shape selected, and what I want to do now is to select the uh, button that says Edit Shape Nodes. It's just below your Select tool. When you click the Edit Shape Nodes, now you can actually click and drag the individual nodes, or these small little sections you see here, these little dots on your outline, 
you can click and drag them just to change the shape of your letter. It's a very simple process to just simply click and drag the node to a new location. So we simply clicked and dragged that corner up to here to clean up the shape a little bit and now when we zoom out we can see that word looks much more like fun than it did before. So you can tweak any little objects that you need to um, to make them easier to read or play with them as you need to. Now one other change that I made to this artwork was this uh, center circle with the word is in the center of it. I actually am going to delete this circle so we'll select the circle object and touch delete on the keyboard. Now the word is appears to disappear. It's actually because uh, it was done in white, um, which works in um, artwork, but with our paint, it, we can't paint in white. So we need to change those letters. So I'm going to select the S and change its fill type to this dark uh, purple or navy color and do the same thing with the eye. And now since I removed the circle, what I'm going to do is to select the word is, just make it a little bit bigger to kind of fill up the space uh, that it's taking up in the center of this object here. Just to change it a little bit, uh, make it a little simpler to paint, a little easier to read. You can change the paint colors if you like to. You can change your palette um, and make any other changes to this artwork that you like, but you can see the process that we go through to tweak that artwork. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open my finished uh, file. So that you can see the finished paintwork Here is the one that I actually painted out. So you can see I took most of the objects and uh, converted them to outlines and again made those little tweaks to the other objects. Uh, left a few filled objects here and there but um, really made this my own and uh, made it where it was going to be easy and fun to paint it out. So once I'm ready now to send this to my machine to paint, I'm going to plug in my USB stick and send this over to paint it. So uh, be sure to check out the next video in this series where we're actually going to uh, show you some tips on how to paint out uh, this file. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have questions about using the uh, DesignWorks software or this particular project, I'd love to hear them. Um, you can leave me a message at the blog. Just leave a comment below. You can send me an email to Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at scissortailstudio.com, or you can um, use the contact link on the blog, which is scissortailstudio.com. Thanks so much and be sure to share this video um, if you enjoyed it.